Hey everybody, we're doing something today that, unless you already knew about this, is going to blow your mind. This is a carryover from the Cold War, or the old days of logic, so to speak, when uh, the environment was kind of a big deal. Uh, we try not to use the environment, at least I don't. I mean, I, it's cool and it can do a lot, but I try to stay out of it if I can. But there's something which requires you to use the environment. Now, originally, when I was doing this, uh, it came about, I, I was looking at the view filters here, which you, know, you can change your mixer to show different things, filter the view, so to speak. And I was looking over here at this one called the bus. Now, the bus option is different than the auxiliary option. When you create a bus on a channel, on a send, it's going to automatically create a destination auxiliary track. And so the bus shouldn't have anything visible. You can see I do have one visible right now because I made one. But there's no easy way to really make a bus channel strip. But that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to talk about because there's something very, very unique about this that I haven't really seen in too many places. When we talk about unique things in logic, this is certainly one of them. Okay, so in the environment, this is the only place to create a bus channel strip. Now, what is a bus channel strip? So first of all, a bus is like an invisible tunnel. It goes from one place to another in logic. So when I use a send on each of my channels to create like a reverb send, um, you'll see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of them going down bus four. So each of those channels send a copy of their audio and they all go into the same tube and they all come out over here with Space Designer on this reverb return. Cool. So that's pretty clear. Now, if we look at that tunnel as an actual object, that's what a bus channel strip is. So they're all going out onto bus four and that tunnel has its own set of controls. So we can actually control the audio going through there, which is pretty handy in some ways, um, but not handy in others. So we'll look at why that could be handy here in a second. Way that you do this in the environment is to go to new channel strip and we go to bus. And that's going to pop up right here. And you can see it says bus one. This one, even though it says bus four, I switched it. But uh, we could change this down here by probably renaming it. But we can come over here. It's up here that we rename it. Let's change that to bus four because I moved it around. There we go. Now bus one, I select this here in the environment. And I can choose which actual bus this is going out. Um, you can see we have all of the buses that we have access to. A lot. Logic has added these over the years. We're going to add, let's see, bus number three because we're using that one. And there we go. Then we're going to change the name of this to bus number three. So here's the cool thing. When I push play... Bus 3 is turned down. We'd have to actually turn it up if we wanted to go out there. But you can see bus 4, that's the signal from all of those other tracks. And I can come through and put different EQs or compressors on the actual bus in the pipeline before it gets to the auxiliary track. So I'm trying to think when this would be useful. Because you know there's got to be a couple times when this actually could be useful. Uh, one of them is if we are busing, um, say, to a vocoder. I don't like using the auxiliary track for this because that's kind of at the end of it. But I'm using, say, a bus of like a vocal here, sending that, or drums, sending that to a vocoder to be either the modulator or the carrier. And um, while the vocoder often has like an EQ or something there that we can use to process it, if I want to add additional effects, 
then I need to do it before the vocoder. Um, but when, when you're using a side chain like that, there's no easy way to do this. You're kind of limited until you come in here to the environment, create a bus channel strip and assign it to the bus that's going to the vocoder side chain. And then we can put whatever effects we want on it and it'll be processed before it gets to the actual vocoder. Mind blown. I mean, that's that's pretty huge. Now, once we have these created, they're going to show up inside of our mixer when we have the bus filter turned on. Um, they'll also show up, I believe, they'll show up here when you have all or tracks all set up. But if you just want to see those individually, then um, certainly... Um, the best way to do that is by clicking the bus filter view and you can see the, the buses. So we can add the effects and do other routing things here. So you'll see that they have no output, um, but you could. You could actually bypass the auxiliary tracks completely and um, do an output here out to our main output and then not have to worry about the aux tracks. Uh, I don't, I think that, well, I don't think that this is always relevant. You don't want to just bypass the aux tracks. There's a, there's no reason to do that. Um, but certainly it does beg the, the question of why this is still here. Part of it is to be backwards compatible because there was a time when we would do more with these. Um, and so there's the backwards compatibility, but also there are still some, some useful things here where we could do this. So for instance, um, we could do a bus off of a track, set the output to one of our other channels, um, like our hardware outputs, and go straight out of logic this way instead of having to do this to an aux track and, and going out that way. So this is a way of sending the tube straight out a hardware output instead of a, a different way. The other thing that this was uh, that's really showed me or reminded me, I suppose, is that we have input tracks here in the environment as well. So we can come through here, create a new input channel strip. And what this does is right here, uh, it means that anything like we have a microphone open, we can put effects on it and then that will go into the actual main window sequencer, and it'll come with those effects tagged onto it. And so if we if we know exactly what we want, I don't know too many people who would write their effects straight onto their track, but it's possible. So you could actually write the stuff on the way into your actual tracks instead of putting effects on it later. So certainly you can see your input here and do stuff with that in ways that um, not too many other programs can really handle without the environment type um, situation happening. So the bus channels, though, for me, definitely kind of a, a mind blown thing a little bit with that. Um, that being said, I'm interested if you can think of any other applications that we might use this. So the side chain thing for me was a huge one because it allows us to process the side chain signal any way that we want. And that means going into compressors, vocoders, alchemy. Um, there's a few other things that accept side chains here, but um, we can process it on the way into that with any of the effects that we have. Uh, we could also use this to go directly to hardware outputs. Um, say that we wanted to do this uh, more as like... Um, a headphone mix. So we want to do a headphone mix out to something we can actually do an additional layer of processing on the pipeline on the way to the headphone mix. So that would be another thing. Is there anything else you can think of that we might want to use this for? I'm sure there are some other applications for this, but I'm curious if any of you have known about this and have used this in creative ways uh, and what you've done with it. Okay, that's the video. I hope it all made sense. I know I always go quick with these topics because I'm excited and there's a lot to them, but um, certainly this is one that if you're just using Logic for the first time, you're not going to fully understand a lot of the implications of this. And for those of you who have used Logic for a while and didn't know about this, 
Uh, I'm curious about your reaction as well. But those of you who have known about this and used it, you're the ones who I want to get more information from because uh, I'm curious on what other things you might have used it for. Okay, that's it for this video. And um, more coming soon. We're about to get the big update to Logic any day, any week, any month, but it's coming. So uh, look forward to that coming out pretty soon.